Okay, so for today's lesson, we're doing module five, lesson 22. By the end of this lesson, you will be able to say, I can generate simple equivalent fractions by using visual fraction models and the number line. The materials you need for today's lesson are your whiteboard supplies. If you have them and would like to um, do the work on your whiteboard at the same time as I am, or you can also use paper or pencil if you don't have those. You also need the Lesson 22 problem set and homework. So you either have the paper copy from your workbook or you can just use the link and complete them on Class Kick. You also will need a pencil if you're doing any work on paper or a device if you're just doing the work on the computer. So first up, we have three fraction strips. We have one for thirds, one for sixths, and one for twelfths. And the question at the bottom is, is eight twelfths equivalent to two thirds and four sixths? So what we need to do first is we need to break the fraction strips up into the pieces that they are supposed to be in. So this first one up here is thirds. So we're going to break it into three equal pieces. I'm going to make this a little bit thicker. Okay. The next one is sixths. So to make sixths, we actually make thirds, just like we did with our fraction strips, and then we folded it in half, which meant each one of these pieces was broken in half, and we end up with six pieces and we can count to check. One, two, three, four, five, six. Next is twelfths. So to make twelfths, we have the same pieces as the sixths. So I'm just gonna put my lines in the same spot. And then if we break those in half again, so if we had our fraction strips in front of us, we would fold them in half again. So we'll break each of these in half, and then we should end up with 12 equal pieces, and we can go back and count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Okay, so we've broken our fraction, fraction strips up. So the next step is to figure out, is eight twelfths equivalent to two-thirds and four-sixths. So we're going to have to do some shading. First, we're going to do the eight-twelfths. So here's twelfths. I'm going to shade eight of those pieces. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I shaded eight twelfths, and I'm actually just going to go ahead and label that for us. So next is eight twelfths equivalent to two thirds. So I'm going to go to the third fraction strip. I'm going to shade two of them. One. Two. And then I'm going to label that two-thirds. Last one is four-sixths. So I'm going to go to the sixth strip and shade four of them. One, two, three, four. And then I'm going to go ahead and label that four-sixths. So the question is, is 8 twelfths equivalent to 2 thirds and 4 sixths? I've shaded and labeled all of them. And what you might notice is that all three of the shadings end in the same spot. So are they equivalent? Remember, equivalent means the same. So are those fraction strips all the same? Yes. 
they are all the same, they are equivalent. So, the way that we would write that would be 8 twelfths equals 2 thirds equals 4 sixths. They all equal the same thing. Okay, let's go ahead to our next slide. Now we have three models in front of us, and what we need to do is model them on the number line. So, the first one we're going to do is this one here. Let's first count how many pieces it's broken into. There's one, two, three pieces. So we're going to use the first number line for the first model and we're going to have our start and our end, okay? We know the start is zero, the end is one whole, because it is one whole shape. We just counted and it's broken into three equal pieces, so I'm gonna break my number line into three equal pieces. Now one of those pieces is shaded, so I'm going to start at zero, I'm going to jump one, and when I get there, I'm at one third. So I'm at the first line out of three lines altogether. Let's go ahead and look at the next one. The next one has two, four, six pieces. So for that number line, I need to break it into six equal pieces. I'll start with my zero. The end is one whole. Remember, I can break it into thirds first and then break it in half. And let's count. I have one, two, three, four, five, six equal pieces. Now, if I look up at this model, two of those pieces are shaded. So that means I need to make two jumps. I'm going to start at zero, one, two two jumps out of the six pieces altogether, so that fraction is two sixths. Let's look at the last one. I'm going to count by threes. This is broken into three, six, nine pieces. So on my last number line, I need nine equal pieces. Gonna start with zero, it ends with one. For nines, I can break into thirds and then break into thirds again. And we can count to check our work. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine equal pieces. Now, if you look up here, one, two, three of those pieces are shaded. So I'm going to jump one, two, three times, and I get to three out of nine. Okay, three ninths. Three out of nine pieces are shaded. We jumped three out of nine times. Now, my question is, are these three pictures equivalent? Are these equivalent fractions? Well, just like on the fraction strip, how they ended in the same spot, we notice these three fractions end in the same spot on the number line. So are they equivalent? The answer would be yes. One third equals two sixths, which equals three ninths. Those fractions are equivalent. They are all the same. Now, another thing that you might notice, and this might be more helpful in the homework, is that we're looking at this one piece that is shaded.
This one has two pieces that are shaded, but if we turn this picture, so I'm gonna draw that same picture, but I'm going to turn it on its side. Oops. So if we turned that picture on its side, and then we shaded those pieces, there's the two sixths that are shaded, do you notice that it looks just like this one? Now let's do the same thing with this one. I'm going to draw that this shape now over here. But instead of shading those three diagonally, I'm going to shade the three next to each other. So I'm still shading three pieces. But if you notice, if I put them in that spot and color it in, those three cover the same amount of space. So you can see that these are equal. If you move or turn the picture, you can see that they cover the same amount of space. So for those of you that are more of a visual learner, it might be easier for you to notice that turning the shape or moving the colored squares covers the same spot. Okay, that takes us to our problem set. So if you'd like to do it on paper along with me, um, if you have your workbook, you can do it in your workbook. Or if you want to just do it on scrap paper, you can do it on scrap paper. If it's easier for you to just watch, you can just watch. Remember that um, in Class Kick, once you click the link, you're going to need to put your first name and last name or last initial. This first page is the problem set. So we're gonna do this one together. Later when you get into class kick, you can still do this if you want. If you don't want to, you don't have to because you've already done it with me in the video. Um, just make sure that you do the second page, which is the homework page, that is the one that's graded. Some of you did not do the second page before, so make sure you're doing that. So, number one, write the shaded fraction of each figure on the blank. Then draw a line to match the equivalent fractions. Write fractions in fraction form. For example, 1 over 2, which would be 1 half. Match using the line drawing function. So let's take this one step at a time. Our first step is to write the fraction shaded on each figure in the blank. So let's look at this fraction here. There are two pieces all together. So one piece is shaded out of one, two pieces. The fraction is one half. And here I'm going to write one out of two or one half. And I get a check mark that tells me I did it correctly. Now let's look at this one. There are one, two pieces shaded out of one, two, three all together. That fraction is two thirds. Check mark, that's correct. Next one right here. There are one, two, three, four pieces shaded out of one, two, three, four, five, six. Or you can count by twos. Remember, two, four, six. So the fraction shaded is four sixths. This one here. One piece is shaded out of one, two, three. That fraction is one third. Remember, if I'm going a little fast for you, you can always pause the video, or if you didn't catch something, don't forget that you have the rewind function. You can just uh, rewind and watch it again. Next one. There are one, two, three pieces shaded out of two, four pieces all together. 
And that fraction is three fourths. Next one, one, two pieces shaded out of two, four pieces all together. Notice how I'm trying to count by twos when I can, make it a little bit faster for me. And that fraction is two fourths. Next one, which should look very familiar. One, two, three pieces shaded out of, now I'm gonna count by threes because I know they're rows of three. Three, six, nine. And that fraction is three ninths. Last one over here, two, four, two, four, six. Six pieces shaded, two, four, six, eight pieces all together. That fraction is six eighths. Okay, so we've labeled all of our fractions. The next step it says, then draw a line to match the equivalent fractions. So now we need to match the fractions. Um, we do that using the line function, but you might notice it's hard to match right now because we cannot see them all at the same time. So if you come up here, there's a magnifying glass with a subtraction sign, and if you hover over it, it says zoom out. I'm going to zoom out until I can see all of the shapes at the same time. That's gonna make it easier for me to match. Now, you have two options here. Um, your first option is that you can draw number lines just like we did for each of these and try to figure out which ones line up. That might be a little more time consuming. So what we're going to try to do is we're going to try to visualize how we can turn these shapes and how we can shade them, um, move the shaded pieces around so that um, so that the it covers the same amount of space so we can try to find the equivalent fractions. So what I mean is if you look at this first one here, and you look at this one over here, you notice that they both have the shape split this way and that whole side shaded. So if I were to turn this second object right here, I'm just gonna show you what that would look like. If I were to turn this object on its side, and shade those same two pieces out of four, we now notice that it looks the same as this one up here. So are those equivalent fractions? Yes, they are. So we just had to visualize turning that object and then we notice that they have the exact same amount shaded. So I'm going to come up here to this line function. I'm going to click the line and I'm going to match this shape all the way down to this shape. And then you see it puts a line in there, okay? Next one is this one here. So we wanna to try to match this shape. So what we're going to think about is what if we move this one over here and we shade this spot instead. So we're going to shade this spot instead. Okay, so we shaded that spot instead, and I can't quite figure out a way to white it out, so I'm just going to put black over this. 
There we go. So that one is not shaded anymore because we moved that shaded spot over here to this one. Now, if you notice, it almost looks like like this whole one is shaded and this whole one is shaded. So it looks like two of those are shaded and then this part is not. Well, if you noticed up here, there's one, two long pieces shaded and then this side is not. So these two end up looking like the equivalent fractions. All we had to do was move over that one shaded piece. So now we're going to take our line function and we're gonna click on this shape and drag it to this shape because those two are equivalent fractions. Okay. Now let's see what's next. We've got this one down here, which actually looks pretty nice, but I noticed this one kind of looks like it, but not quite. But if I were to take this piece here and move it over here instead so that that's shaded, this piece is no longer shaded. So this is an empty square. This is a square, square, and a square. Well, if you notice up here, there's square, square, square. If we were to shade those in completely, they look like the same shape. All we had to do was take one of those rectangles and match it with, I'm sorry, one of those triangles and match it with another triangle to make a full square. And now you can see that those are equivalent. So I'm going to take my line function and I'm gonna match this shape to this one. And that obviously only leaves us with two more shapes, so we know those ones have to match. I'm gonna go ahead and draw my line to match those. This one and this one. But let's talk about why that works as well. So we're going to do the same thing. We notice that this goes all the way across. So can we make these three look like this one? If we move this square up here, So that's empty now. And then we move the other square all the way up here. So this is empty now, it's not shaded. Now we have this whole part shaded. This whole part is not shaded. Up here on this one, you can see this whole part is not shaded but this whole top part is shaded and now they look like the same shape. So that is why those ones are equivalent fractions. So that is all for that worksheet. But what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to just, um, I'm gonna write that out for you. Let's look at what fractions we matched. First, we matched one half And that came all the way down here to two fourths. So one half is equal to two fourths. Next, we matched four sixths with two thirds. Four sixths is equal to two thirds. Then we matched three fourths with six eighths. Three fourths is equal to six eighths. And the last one was three ninths and one third. I'm gonna write that one up here. Three ninths is equal to one third. And those are all the equivalent fractions that we figured out using those shapes today. So what your job is now is you are going to click over to the second page, the homework page. That's the page that you need to complete for credit. As you fill in the fractions, it will give you points. However, the matching part, you will not get points for that until I go back in and look at it. Um, so for now, just you'll just be getting credit for filling in these boxes, and then I will look at the matching part later. So um, I'm going to go back to my slideshow. 
I'm going to start my 10 minute timer. So if you'd like to use the 10 minute timer, you may. Remember after 10 minutes, if you're still working, you're gonna stop, take a five minute break, and then try to come back and complete it. If you still can't get it after that, then you need to pop into one of my Zoom meetings. Um, I can either share my screen and walk you through it, or you can share your screen and I can walk you through it that way. And here you go.
Okay, and that's it for today's lesson. So if you have not finished the homework yet, go ahead, take a five minute break, come back to it. Remember, if you still need help, get in contact with me. That is what I'm here for. Have a good rest of your day.